The principle of open access is that scholars, journals, uh, funders uh, try to make the work available under open licenses so that it can be copied, uh, it can be exchanged, it can be reused, it can be used as teaching materials. Um, and then that's just the use by someone of, of the material. There's also the possibility that the work can be built upon, that other scholars can build upon the work that is out there, uh, either electronically or by using it in their own work. And so it's both receiving knowledge and adding to knowledge. Um, we see intellectual property and the public domain as two sides of the same coin. It's the, the freedoms, the area of space, of openness, as well as the areas of property and control, those two working together that actually make science, make culture work. It's not either control or freedom, but the combination of the two. We study the balance. Open access is just such an example. You have things which are published in journals, uh, which the funder or the author uh, has decided this work is going to be made, uh, made available openly. And that gives you a new ecosystem for creativity, for learning, for scholarship. What we're saying as scholars is that there's a, there is actually an obligation on scholars and on universities to live consistently with their principles, which is the principle to share knowledge as widely and freely. You don't ever want to say to someone, oh, you can't learn about this, whether this is the Constitution or the Renaissance or a gene sequence, because you're not rich enough, because you can't afford to pay for the article. Um, sometimes that may be necessary, but to the extent it can be minimized or circumvented, then we really have an obligation to try and do that, and that's what the open access movement is all about. Creative Commons licenses are um, easy to use tools that um, anyone can put on their copyrighted works, whether it's a song or uh, a video or uh, a picture or a book. Um, my own, my own re recent book is under a Creative Commons license. You can download it for free uh, from the open web. Um, what that means uh, is that the, the, uh, the creator marks the book uh, with the license saying these are the freedoms you have. In this case, it's you can copy it, you can redistribute it, you just can't uh, copy it commercially. Um, on, in terms of open access, what Creative Commons licenses do is they make this enormous commons of educational material. So all of the work that's out there, it's under Creative Commons licenses, let's say it's, you only need to attribute the author and that's all. You know you can take all of that material, you could uh, compile it into new volumes, you could republish it, you could translate it into other languages. And you have to think of that as this realm of freedom that the creators themselves have enabled rather than a public domain that the state says, okay, there's no copyright over this, for example, there's no copyright over federal works. Creative Commons licenses make a, a private commons uh, and extend it to the world.